SCP-1010 Special Containment Procedures SCP-1010 is to be contained on site within an ecological containment dome outlined in Document 1010-14. The enclosure is to contain populations of Pinus, Sylvestris, and Dryopteris carthusiana, as SCP-1010 is unable to effectively mimic either plant species. The ultraviolet lamps in the ceiling are to be set to mimic the diurnal cycle. Every 72 hours, 50 gallons of water is to be added into SCP-1010's enclosure via the sprinkler system installed in the ceiling. There should be at least one attendant watching the security feed from SCP-1010's enclosure at all times and should report any abnormal behavior SCP-1010 exhibits. During the seasons of winter and spring, 18th of December to the 18th of March, no personnel other than Class D are allowed to enter SCP-1010's enclosure. SCP-1010's Description SCP-1010 is a humanoid of short stature that has leaves covering its body with only its face, palms, and soles of its feet uncovered. The leaves grow directly from SCP-1010. They are capable of rapidly changing species in order to camouflage itself from humans and animals. The rate of change from one species of leaf to another takes an average of 10 seconds. How this is achieved is unknown. SCP-1010's face is that of a regular Caucasian male in his 80s or 90s with a large beard that is made of an unknown species of moss. The skin of SCP-1010 is similar in appearance to the bark of Quercus rubar but has been shown to be very flexible and extremely durable. SCP-1010 may use its leaves as a defensive mechanism. The species of leaves used range from stinging nettles to Scottish thistles, as well as several unidentified plant species. It is to be noted that the irritant chemicals that are produced from the stinging nettles in SCP-1010 are much more potent than the natural equivalent. SCP-1010 has shown intelligence equal to that of a common chimpanzee, and so far has not shown any signs of communication other than apparently unintelligible shouting and grunting. SCP-1010 synthesizes glucose through an abnormally fast rate of photosynthesis. The water required is absorbed through the hands and feet of SCP-1010, which has a physiological structure similar to a root system. SCP-1010 has a weight of approximately 25 kg and a height of 153 cm. SCP-1010 has displayed strength greater than what would be assumed from its size. For six hours after sunrise, SCP-1010 will remain in a fixed position before carrying out its daily tasks. If SCP-1010 witnesses someone purposely damaging any plant life, it will immediately attack that person with the intention of killing them. If SCP-1010 is successful in killing them, it will proceed to cover their body in a sap-like substance of unknown composition that is secreted from the mouth of SCP-1010. The body will then be used as fertilizer. The behavior of SCP-1010 changes depending on the season. It is unknown how SCP-1010 is aware of what season it is, despite containment. Listed here is the seasons along with the behavior of SCP-1010. Springtime. SCP-1010 will work on the seeding of nearby plants. SCP-1010 will also take on an anomalous property of advancing growth at non-plant species within a certain radius estimated to be about 100 meters. The affected properties include height, hair length, nail length, etc. Another effect caused by SCP-1010 during spring is that any human who comes within approximately 10 meters of SCP-1010 becomes impregnated with a fertilized ovum after a short period of time. The exact amount of time is not known, but is believed to be less than three minutes. This effect is not limited to only females. The rate of impregnation in males is recorded as being 5%. In the case of females, the length of pregnancy is roughly nine months, and the child will be genetically identical to the mother. The child will display no anomalous properties despite its conception. It is to be noted that females that have had a hysterectomy are still subject to becoming pregnant, as a complete uterus is grown as well as the fertilized ovum. In the case of a male becoming pregnant, a complete womb and fertilized ovum will instantly appear next to the bladder. The fetus must be removed within five months of impregnation via a cesarean section to prevent the male expiring from internal hemorrhaging. 
The fetus produced from males will always be a stillborn, and after genetic testing, it is shown that they are the same species of SCP-1010. Summer and Autumn Behaviors SCP-1010 will concentrate on tending to and encouraging the growth of plants. No anomalous properties have been noted during this time. Winter Behaviors SCP-1010 will go into hibernation and will spend all this time staying at one location. SCP-1010 will only move to stay hidden from animals and humans. During winter, any human that has come within roughly 100 meters of SCP-1010 has reported a general weakness citing a lack of energy. Subjects eventually expire within 20 minutes of exposure. The effect is directly correlated to the distance from SCP-1010. SCP-1010 will discover that in England after following stories of a leaf man in the woods, and reports of males becoming inexplicably pregnant. So far, SCP-1010 is the only specimen that has been found, but similar stories throughout the world are being investigated for possible instances of SCP-1010. Addendum 1010-1 Junior Research Assistant Shiblaha suggested that one of the stillborn fetuses produced by a male was to be given to SCP-1010 in order to see what effect it would have on its behavior. After a fetus was grown and removed from a male D-Class, it was presented to SCP-1010, at which point it picked up the fetus and proceeded to carefully bury it within its enclosure along with an amount of the sap-like substance produced from SCP-1010's mouth. After four weeks, a sprout was seen to be growing from the spot that the fetus was buried in. SCP-1010 has paid a large amount of attention to the sprout, and will start aggressively shouting at anyone who gets too close to it. The sprout itself is to be monitored in case it develops any anomalous properties.